Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm going for a big one today. We're going for a big one and one which has needed updating probably for the last six months, honestly. But every time I thought about it, it's like, oh, how do I fit that into one single video? But we're going for it today. So we're going to do an updated guide on how to beat the clan boss. Okay, and a lot of you have been like, ah, oh, this is simple. It's not. There's a lot of different things to think about when you're trying to build your clan boss team. Uh, and we're going to run through different sections today. So a basic overview of the clan boss is first. We're then going to go on to some of the unkillables. We're going to go on to speed tuning. I'm going to touch briefly on stun targeting. Then we're going to talk about the main two topics, which is how do you stay alive and how do you do damage? Okay, I will kind of like bookmark these different things down below. So if you feel like you're already an expert in some of them, you can kind of come to the part that you want. Um, I will say, why am I going back to this video? Why have I done a ton of content on Clan Boss in the past? Clan Boss is the best way to earn shards and books. I'm, I'm hoping for some Brucey bonus luck. Book! Right now. Legendary book from Nightmare Clan Boss. That's the first one. Nothing in that hall. Ultra Nightmare. Good chance of shards. Good chance of books. Shard. And book. Come on. So this is the best way in the game on a daily basis to get big rewards. Okay. That's, that's what it comes down to. So this is where I would say to people, put your focus. Yeah. This is where you should be trying to make sure as soon as you can in the game, you're at least hitting nightmare and hopefully you're hitting ultra nightmare as well. This video is going to help you get there. So let's start with the basics then. You can, anyone could come to hellhades.com, come to the raid stages tool. This is a great tool. Okay, it's a great tool. It helps you know what you're up against. So I could say clan boss and then I can choose any of the difficulty. So let's go with nightmare for this video. And it will tell me how much resistance that clan boss has got. Therefore, how much accuracy do I need to land my stuff? Okay, so this gives us all of the basic info. It also tells me what speed the clan boss is running at. Yeah, so you can do this for any level of clan boss. If we went to Ultra Nightmare, you notice that the requirement goes up for accuracy and the clan boss's speed goes up as well. So it gives you a good indication for your level of play at what sort of speeds you should be running at because you at least want to be going kind of the same type of speed as a clan boss and you want to make sure that you land your stuff. Therefore, you need to be able to beat his resistance. That's one important part. When we get into the, the actual game, the clan boss guide is kind of, it's actually not terrible, but it doesn't really tell you about what happens when the clan boss changes from void affinity to other affinities. So the clan boss has always got three hits, an AoE A1, an AoE A2, and then a stun A3. Okay, so the first two AoEs, um, you just have to be able to deal with AoE damage. We'll get on to deal with, dealing with damage in a, a little while. When, when he flips affinity, he actually does more hits on his AoEs. Uh, he also lands a decreased accuracy if he's a magic affinity. He lands a decreased attack if he's force. And then this is the nasty one for most people. He lands a decreased speed when he is spirit affinity. This is on his second AoE hits. So a lot of teams need to be able to cover uh, a block debuff's ability to stop those things landing to be able to kind of deal with the clan boss effectively or to be able to make sure you continue to land your abilities and get the same level of damage out. The third hit that he does is a stun ability and it's a single target. This third ability will generally target your leader unless there's some sort of thing around buffs, debuffs. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for this part because if I go into stun targeting properly, it's going to be like another 30 minutes on the video. I will link below and ping it above right now a separate video that Safira did on the HH Gaming channel um, around stun targeting. It's the best one out there right now. So we're going to put that on there, but it will help you understand what's going on. That third hit is a enemy max HP skill. So what that means is if he hits you, the higher your health, the harder he hits. Yeah, it doesn't matter about anything else. The higher your health, the harder he's going to hit you. You can still mitigate that damage with defense. So whoever's going to be your stun target, you actually want high defense and a lower health pool compared to the rest of your team. 
So that's some of the basics around the clan boss. You can go into this kind of guide and see, you know, he is immune to the basic sleep freeze. He can't be turn meter controlled. You can't put decreased speed on him. Um, and he takes a hell of, hell of a lot of damage from poison and HP burn, which we'll get onto in a minute. I guess it's worth saying as well, his damage ramps up over time. So from the 10th turn onwards, he starts to scale damage. From the 20th turn, it gets ridiculous and, um, and it starts to scale very high. Uh, and when you get to the 50th turn, he will hit you and you cannot revive after that point. He puts a block revive on you. So that kind of puts, puts unkillable teams to bed at turn 50. Let's get on to unkillables next. So yeah, the most effective way to get maximum damage out of clan boss is to build an unkillable team. It's the, not, maybe not the most effective, it's the easiest way to get max chests against Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare. But it's very champion specific. I just wanted to show you here. I mean, we're, we're early on, like an hour into clan boss on my clan. And you've got unkillable team, unkillable team, unkillable team, unkillable team. Yeah, it's just the easiest way to do it. I bet as well, if we look at teams of the week, unkillable, 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 uh, not unkillable, similar to the sort of team I run, unkillable, 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 not unkillable and not unkillable so most of them are the ones that aren't have got very champion specific things to, to kind of get the job done so all i'm going to talk about in this video is who the main unkillable champions are what you need to look for and then i'm going to point you to deadwood jedi site in fact i'll show you it right now deadwoodjedi.com basically what what he pulls together on this site is is exceptional it's really really good for the community so you can go into speed tunes here and you can come down and basically you've got a list of a bunch of the unkillable champions on the right hand side here. So Roshgard the Tower, Sir Nick, Warcaster, Maneater uh, and Demetha are the, the main unkillable champions. And then basically these are comps that run those champions. So the things to look out for with those, and we just go through it quick, is you have to book their unkillable skill. So with Sir Nick... You have to have legendary books into the skill that makes him unkillable. Otherwise, it won't, you won't be able to make these things work. Same with Roshkar the Tower. You need books to land in his block damage area for him to be able to do it. Same with the other champions as well. So any of these that you're kind of looking at for unkillable comps, you basically need a combination of these champions, Maneaters, Demetheus, um, Painkeepers, Warcaster, Sir Nix, you need a combination of those and you can kind of get the one that would fit you best from Deadwood's site. But on all of those champions, you have to book the skill that makes them unkillable. Okay, that's, that's the kind of first premise. Once you've done that, honestly, even if they're like level 50s, you can still get a lot of damage away with these unkillable teams. You can do a ton of work with them. So for me, it's like the number one thing to aim for if you've got the champions. But for the rest of the video, it's kind of like, if you don't have the champions, this is what you need to do. So let's talk about speed tunes. And, you know, for my free-to-play account, I don't have unkillables. I also don't have some of the really big legendary champions to make clan boss easy. Therefore, I have to manipulate speed to get my damage away. Okay, and there's a number of things that you will hear in the community if you're not kind of well-versed with clan boss. And it'll be things like a one-to-one -one ratio, a four-for-three, a two-for-one. And you're like, yeah, what am I? Am I at the a horse's ear? Am I, am I going for a bet? No, this is just um, what we're saying here is we want to run at a certain speed compared to the clan boss. So for a standard one to one, again, we're on Deadwood's site here for different speed tunes. I'll just pick one out. A standard one for one comp. Click in here. And what you're looking at is for every time the clan boss has a turn, which is his first column, turn one, turn two, turn three, for every time clan boss has a turn, you want your team to also all have a turn. That's a one for one. When he goes, you go, okay? You've then got a much more preferred four for three. So you've got some champions. Uh, a really good example is Sepulcher. Uh, you've got some champions who benefit from lapping the clan boss whilst the rest of your team go one for one. Okay, so in the, in the instance of Sepulcher, she's got an ability that will block 
debuffs therefore protect you from those second aoe's that i spoke about also protect you from the stun hits actually landing a stun yeah but you want her to go four times but every time the clan boss goes three times so you see the blue bar here's a polka she's going one two three four whereas everyone else is going one two three for every three times the clan boss goes so a really useful and and even if Sepulchre's not the person you want to be on the four for three you can use these speed tunes to fill in your four for three champion but you'll notice that some of the champions are actually running slower than the clan bosses if i zoom in a touch you'll see that you know the clan boss on ultra nightmare which is what we're looking at here runs at 190 we saw that earlier on whereas some of these are running in the 170s so what you're doing is you've got one person lapping others are a bit slower but they all fall into sync in the right way okay so that's a four for three and then the other kind of commonly sought speed tune is a two for one this is what i run on my free to play account so what does that mean i mean it should be pretty pretty self-evident but basically your team are getting two turns for every time the clan boss gets one turn and sometimes with these sort of comps it takes a little while to sink in so you see early on we're getting like a few hits a few hits a few hits and then turn three suddenly bam everyone's getting two turns for every one turn the clan boss has this significantly increases your damage because you're just hitting more frequently it also believe it or not significantly increases your survivability because you've got more chance of landing those important debuffs to keep you alive more chance of rotating your your big buffs to keep you alive and more chance of landing hits when you're in life steal gear to heal you back up to full so there's a number of ways that running faster um gives you that that kind of benefit of more damage and more longer term survivability um but you have to kind of again have the right champions to make it work and again they can kind of be like changed up so you know in this particular one you've got high cartoon and apothecary creating the extra speed uh rotating through the team there's there's loads of other options on the deadwood site which will give you a kind of good feel for what you can do and it tells you here like specific champions now this one here has got one speed champion but there's someone else extending the speed buff over time so there are kind of like nuances around what you need to do but each of these different comps you can kind of just read up what is required to make this work and again this deadwood site is a really good resource to kind of help you decide what you want to do with that okay so let's get into the two kind of juicier parts of the video then how do you stay alive and how do you do damage okay they're the kind of two key things that you need to understand once you've got the speed tune in your head it's like right how do i make sure with this speed tune i last for as long as i possibly can and within that time frame i do as much damage as possible so let's talk about uh stand alive first the basics you need to heal you will all be taking damage everyone in your team will take damage so there's two kind of key ways to to stay alive you even need someone in your team that has got a leech ability okay so leech goes onto the clan boss and you need to land that so you need accuracy to land that but leech goes onto the clan boss uh so if we take someone i use on my free to play which is the legendary deke um it's got a leech on his a1 you need that to be on the clan boss all the time pretty much otherwise your team will not heal up to full okay so when you hit the clan boss when you've got leech on him you heal for 18 percent of the damage you do now if your champions are are level um, 60 and they've got masteries and you're running a war master or giant slayer mastery then that also counts as your damage so that counts as you hitting against leech and you heal back for that okay the secondary way um which is probably for newer players honestly but you can quite quickly get into leech if you've got pretty good gear the secondary way is life steal gear so it's the same premise really as you hit you get 30 percent of the damage you do back yeah so it's a slightly stronger version of the leech or quite a, quite a bit stronger but it's the same idea as you do damage you heal back war master giant slayer does the same effect it, it it heals for a proportion of those procs that you get and they hit hard against clan boss so really if you've got life steal gear on and you're procking war master or giant slayer you should heal to full on any champion uh if you don't get the proc 
you want to be doing a bit of damage yourself so that at least you get a heal back with that life steal gear on. If you're not level 60s, let's say you're an earlier player, you're, you're on like, I don't know, hard clan boss and you don't have level 60s yet with masteries, another option is actually using things like uh, regen gear. So you're guaranteed to heal every turn. It's not based on your damage. It's just you have a turn you heal. So this is better for early game um, if you've got some. And then there's also immortal gear, which tends to be quite a nice filler because you get a 3% heal every turn. But, you know, three lots, 9% heal every turn. It's okay, but it's not of the same sort of level of healing of the other ones that we've spoken about there. So other things to make sure you stay alive then. The biggest one I would, I would throw out there is placing decrease attack on the clan boss. This is, we're not talking unkillables anymore. Unkillables are uh, done and dusted. We're talking about standard teams. Decrease attack um, reduces all of the damage you've got coming into you on the AoE hits. doesn't make any difference to that stun hit, the single target one. But the AoE damage gets significantly reduced with decrease attack champions. And I'd always say, for you know, unless you've got specific teams in mind... You know, getting a decrease attack on the A1 is is really important. And with a lot of champions, now that we can control AI and tell it to turn off abilities, for a lot of champions, you actually turn off other abilities and you just say, you know what, just keep A1 in for me. I need decrease attack to be on all the time. With other champions like an Ultan here, you actually bring other good abilities on an A2, so you would keep that on. But decrease attack on significantly reduces the damage that you're going to take and you know if you're a nightmare or above it's like a it's a staple in any team to have a good decrease attack champion that is getting a lot of hits away so i mentioned ultan's a2 steal here which is an increased defense buff on your whole team there's actually a defense cap and i'm pretty sure sorry if i get this wrong the community but there's a lot of big brains in this community that have, have the kind of filtered in information over time I think Ash Voyager kind of found out about defense caps. That work's been kind of worked on by Bobo and Mitch and Zombie Lord and I think a bunch of others as well. But it's been found that there is a, a kind of damage mitigation over time as you increase your defense. So once you get to 4,200 roughly defense, you will no longer start to mitigate more damage. Therefore, in terms of survivability, once you've hit that number, you can start to ramp up your health okay but in increasing your defense is the best way of reducing damage um but ehp effective health points which is the kind of combination of defense and hp is starting to become more and more known within the community so hopefully it spreads it a bit further but basically if you're putting increased defense on your team then that gives you 60 percent more defense therefore if you're trying to get to 4200 cap you can actually bring your defense right back to 2700, put the increased defense on, and you've still got your 4200 cap. Therefore, you can put stats elsewhere. Yeah, so if you look at my current clan boss team, which, which is a crazy team, by the way, 2600 defense. Yeah, I'm not pushing high defense numbers at all. I'm pushing other stats. Uh, take my Taradi the Frog here, Beast of the Clan Boss. He's pushing. 2800 but i've gone massive on his health pool and i'll talk about that in a minute but it's the right speed get to the defense you need for your comp um and if you're not running increased defense and you need to get your defense numbers much higher through using things like um defensive gear on your gloves and your and your chest and your artifacts um because it's a really important way to mitigate the damage coming into you once you've got that kind of defense cap in play and actually it's worth saying on that as well Within that 4,200, if you've got people with defensive auras, so take my Altan again, he's got an aura which gives me 33% more defense. Well, that's always based on my base number. So 33% more defense for Altan will be based on the 1398, whereas the defense buff, increased defense buff, is based on my total defense. Okay, so I will get... 33% of 1398 added to my defense number. And then once that's combined, I will get 60% on my total defense number. Yeah, so when you're working out your 4200, you can get those auras in play as well. So once we've got our defense to the right level, we've understood that we can heal, 
You then want to try and get into your team, shoehorn them in, shoehorn in an ally protection champion. Ally protect is kind of broken in clan boss, especially for staying alive. So my one at the moment is Taradi the Frog in my team. What does ally protection do? Basically, it reduces the damage the rest of your team take by 50%. And the ally protector is meant to take that 50% damage for them. Okay, so you're kind of like, yeah, but that means my ally protector is going to be dead. It's going to be dead like that. Well, actually, the way the game codes ally protection, and this is part of the, the kind of new meta realization, call out to Yang who did a lot of work on this, another YouTuber. Uh, I did a video with him, which perhaps I'll ping that above here. Um, Basically realize that when the clan boss hits turn one, before it starts ramping its damage, yeah, there's a certain amount of damage. Then as it ramps its damage over time, that scale was crazy. You know, once you get to turn 20 odd, it's a lot of damage. But for the ally protection amount that you take, it's still taking the ally protected amount of that first level of damage. It doesn't scale. So all you're really doing is taking damage away from the rest of the team by using ally protection so it's a massive massive buff if you want to last a long time into clan boss um which i do i, I last like well into like the 90 turns with this team that i run but ally protection and there's a, quite a few champions that can do this skill uh, in fact if there's any of these skills that you're kind of looking at and you're thinking well, where do i find them uh, how do i know which of my roster do the skill again you can come to hellhades.com just come to homepage or a champion page and down the right hand side there's raid shadow legends quick links so i could say right buff ally protection and then basically we've listed all of the champions that do the skill so full team protection with the big version of ally protect down to individuals down to the small version team protection so you can kind of look through this and be like right which of my roster can do these different jobs that Hell Hades is talking about here? Now, who's doing the decrease attack skill um, that he's spoken about there? Which of my roster do this, etc.? So you can kind of delve in and find the people for you that would do the job properly. So I think the last thing to talk about here on protection is shields. There's not that many champions that do good shieldage. One of them that is, who is also an absolute freaking beast, is Brogni. Brogni has got a shield ability um, and then he's got a, an ability that extends the shield as well, which makes it super nuts. Um, so Brogni is like a call out shield champion for your whole team. Shielding just reduces the damage you're going to take because it's not hitting your life pool. It's, it eats up the shield first, then it eats up your life pool. So shielding is important, but there's just not that many champions that do it that well. Brogni's one. Valk is another absolute beast. Her shield scales infinitely with defense. So the higher the defense number you get, the bigger, the fatter those shields become. Um, but don't forget your speed tune whilst you're doing it as well. So yeah, Valkyrie is huge. There's other big champions like Warlord, um, Blind Seer. A lot of these are legendary champions. There's not really many epics that do a great job on shielding, honestly. You know, Taradi does a little one. But they're not going to be the things that keep you alive in the same way the Valk Shield, the Warlord Shield, or the Brogni Shield will. But yeah, Shield's a nice one to just kind of top up your health and keep your life for longer. So that's staying alive. <laughs> uh, let's get into um, dealing damage. How do we deal damage against Clan Boss? Um, and there's a number of ways. I kind of touched on it already in certain ways. So one of the things that you can do to deal damage is get your masteries in check. So masteries like Giant Slayer or War Master. There's very, very small reason, in fact, almost zero reason, that anyone in your clan boss team should not be running War Master or Giant Slayer. It's a massive part of where your damage comes from. Basically, War Master is best on champions that have got an A1 that hits one time or two times. And Giant Slayer, you get more value out of champions that hit three or four times. That's kind of it. You basically hit for a big chunk of damage based on a percentage chance. So 60% chance on Warmaster of just hitting for a chunk of damage, like 65k roughly. 
against clan boss. You ramp those up over time for the whole clan boss fight, and it ends up being a big part of your damage. So, you know, you definitely want to be bringing in five champions as early as you can with full masteries to get the damage done. To get the job done, masteries become massively important. So that's the first thing. The second one, probably one of the most basic things, is a clan boss hates poison. Okay, you get a lot of damage away from poison. A lot of the unkillable teams we kind of touched on earlier, poison is the way to do the damage. Because you know in an unkillable team you're going to last 50 turns, you just want to ramp poison up. So, you know, you've got champions like your Kale as your starter champion, your Frozen Banshee, anyone who's got abilities that can land a lot of poison for a decent amount of time. That's what you're looking for. Dracos of the world, your Tomb Lords now. Um, anyone who's going to put multiple poisons out on, ideally on an A1 skill, and they go on 5% poison for a good amount of turns. That's what you want. Poison will be one of the mainstays um, for your damage for clan boss forever. Yeah, for, for the whole time that you do clan boss. So poison abilities are big. Um, HP burns are also kind of good. Trouble with an HP burn is it you can only ever land one of them. So with poison, you can stack multiple poisons. HP burn, there's going to only ever be one HP burn out there. So, you know, if you've got a champion that brings something else as well. So if I take Geo, Geo does crazy damage with his passive. He does HP burn, but he also brings something else like a weaken, which is one of the other ways to build your damage. So weaken and decrease defense are the other two ways to massively boost your damage. And interestingly, because decreased defense is obviously scaling on the clan boss's defense number, Weaken gives you more damage through two brutal clan boss if you were only able to apply one. Decreased defense gives you more damage from Nightmare up to Ultra Nightmare. But if you can play both, decreased defense reduces his defense, therefore you hit harder. And Weaken straight up will just give you 25% more damage with your hits and with your clan boss stuff. So both of them really good ways to kind of bolster your damage. Again, you know, go out and look through your roster. Who can bring more than one thing at a time. Who's got a decreased attack and a poison, or a weaken and a decreased defense together, or poisons and decreased attack? Like, like, what have you got which gives you multiple versions of these things to get the job done? So, one of the other things you can do this is um, there's only a few champions in the game that have got this skill, but counter attack is a great skill when you're, you're facing clan boss. So, Marta, Skull Crusher, and Valkyrie, they're the three champions that have got a full team counter-attack. Basically, when the clan boss does that AoE hit on you, you all hit back. What does it mean? More chances of healing through your hits. More chances of Giant Slayer or Warmaster procs. More damage. Yeah, that's basically it. It's a really, really good skill. Um, all of them go on for two turns on those three champions. So when you're doing your speed tune, they kind of want to be the last person to go before the clan boss goes so that the counter-attack can spread over both AoE abilities. But this is one of the best ways to get additional damage up from your team. The other one, which is kind of similar in a way, um, but, but is played in a different style, is ally attack. And there's a few different kind of, most of them legendary, honestly, but there's a couple of good epics. Backer in the Fat is one um, that can do an ally attack ability. So you see here, Hordes Fury. Attacks one enemy with four allies. Your whole team's going in and they're all hitting. All hitting with their A1s. Think about it again. What's on your A1s? Your decrease attack ability. Your poison abilities. Yeah. So you're actually landing the debuffs that you need at the same time as doing additional hits. More hits, more damage. So ally attack is also a really good skill to boost your damage up. Even if you're doing stuff like unkillable comps. So the last thing I'm going to touch on here is just... For damage building to hit hard <laughs> it sounds dumb but honestly like my clan boss team i got iron braga in my team he has got a hundred percent crit rate he has got a lot of stats in the ability that boosts his damage and he has got a hell of a lot of crit damage yeah he is built to hit like an absolute freaking freight train he is pulverizing that clan boss for a couple of hundred k a hit and that boosts my damage massively. Yeah, so with my team, 
I actually don't rely on poisons because I've built a team that hit like absolute freight trains coming at you. So that's that's more of an end game build, honestly. But um, don't discount the fact that you can just hit this this clan boss well and truly between the eyes and take him down. So look, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I will link below a couple of websites that I've talked about. I'll also link below some uh, clan boss videos that I've done on the free to play and my main account where I'm showing off some of these comps. Um, but it's a big topic, clan boss. So, you know, you need to find the right style of team that's going to fit your roster. It's always a roster by roster thing. Sometimes if I'm building clan boss teams for other people, I can spend 40 minutes deciding which team we're going to run yeah it's so important to make sure that that you understand how your pieces fit together to get the most out of them and how you get to that right speed tune to give you the most um the most damage at the end of the day so there you go guys i've been hell hades that is clan boss i will see you later